Revelation chapter 14, look at verse 14. This is where it gets exciting. Are you ready? You ready to connect some dots? Remember we said that a rapture has to happen right about now to be consistent with all the other passages. The multitude, or the, the, the 144,000, judgment's about to be poured out. And guess what we see Jesus on in chapter 14, verse 14. And I looked, and behold, <coughs> excuse me, a white cloud, and upon the cloud, one sat like unto the Son of Man, is your Bible at a capital S? Do you wonder who this is? Yeah. Having on his head, what does he have on his head? A golden crown. Now remember the Antichrist, a crown was given to him. That's a whole lot different than Jesus Christ showing up with the crown already. He has that authority. Uh, with the crown. In his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, cried with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time has come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. Matthew 13, look at verse 36. Then Jesus sent the multitudes away and went to the house, and his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. And he answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares of the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is what? The end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. And we begin, and he continues to explain that. But isn't it interesting that the Lord Jesus tells us that there's a harvest coming and there's going to be the good seed and there's going to be the tares. And in Revelation 14, we find Jesus thrusting in his sickle, the earth is reaped, and then another angel thrust in their sickle for the wine press of his wrath. You have the wheat, you have the tares. Isn't it? It's, I find it interesting that all these dots begin to connect only to be dispelled by a dispensational say, oh, nope, that's not what it's talking about. You're way out of context. Well, what is it talking about? Where is, you say, well, I don't believe it's in chapter 7. That's just when it's mentioned. I don't believe it's in chapter 14. It's just coincident. Okay, well, if it's not in chapter 7, if it's not in chapter 14, where is it? There isn't any other place to point to, is there? There's no other time frame in eschatology. Well, I believe it's Revelation chapter 4. Well, let's just use our logic, okay? Let's just go loose. In Revelation chapter 4, you have no cloud. You do not have the Son of Man mentioned. You have a voice mentioned. You don't know whose it is. You have the voice. You have no, uh, sorry, you have no crown of gold. You have no gathering crowd. All you have in Revelation chapter 4 is one person taken up in the Spirit. And you have no trumpet. You only have, as it were, a trumpet speaking with you. Now, let's go back to Revelation chapter 7 and chapter 14. We have a white cloud. Every time you read about the Lord Jesus Christ, what's it saying? He's coming in clouds, is he not? As we see the Son of Man coming in clouds. That's why when we sing uh, uh, Song 55, when the roll is called up yonder, on that bright and cloudless, we change it to on that bright and cloudy morning. Because he's coming in on a cloud. Every, every pre-tribber out there believes he's coming in on a cloud, but their rapture verse has no clouds. And every other verse that has clouds, oh, that's not the cloud it's talking about. Well, which cloud is it talking about? Because every time I see Jesus coming on a cloud, you tell me it's not the rapture. We see a cloud in Revelation chapter 14, Revelation chapter 7. We see the Son of Man, capital S, showing up on that cloud. We see he has a golden crown on his head. We even see the voice of an archangel when he's standing on the cloud and the voice of the angel says, the time has come to reap. Doesn't that sound like the rapture promise when the voice of the archangel will sound? Turn, if you will, to 1 Thessalonians. I want to show you that because that's, nobody will argue that 1 Thessalonians is not a rapture verse. But where does it happen? We don't have a voice of an archangel in Re Revelation chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, look at verse 16. 1 Thessalonians 4, look at verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of who? The archangel. And with what? The trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first, and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. The more we read about this rapture, the more we start saying, okay, golden crown, son of man, on a cloud, with a trumpet, an archangel giving the call. And when we see it happen in Revelation, nope, nope, it has to be chapter 4. And none of those events take place. And if anything, maybe just a few are alluded to, but that's a stretch.